So this one I have put as a slightly different example here because there's going to be something different about the way that we write this one. When you have a look at this polynomial, is there anything that you notice about this polynomial? There's no x squared, okay? There's no x squared. And it's a bit like if I had the number 3047, I have nothing in the hundreds column, but I still put a zero there to say that there's nothing in the hundreds column. So when I do this division, I'm going to say that it's got zero x squared to try and keep that position in the division. Because you know we said each column represents a different power of x. We're still going to keep that column there with a zero x squared in. So we are going to say that this is equal to, we're actually going to do it as 3x cubed plus zero x squared minus 2x plus 4. And we're going to divide this by x minus 1. So this is the thing I wanted you to be really careful of. For this example, you add in a 0x squared just to keep that place open and available, OK? Because we're going to need to use that place during the division. If you didn't do that, you're going to not figure out where to put a particular number, OK? So we'll go quite quick through this. We'll do the 3x cubed divided by x. Oh, sorry, yes. You could write it as minus 0x squared. It's not going to make any difference at all, because when you do the multiplying process, you're going to be multiplying by 0 or minus 0, which will do the same thing. OK? So it's going to be 3x squared. The 3x cubed divided by x is 3x squared. Then we do the multiply. So you get 3x uh, cubed minus 3x squared. And then you're going to do your subtraction really carefully. What's the result of the subtraction? It's 3x squared. Good, it's 3x squared, because you're minusing a minus. So you get 3x squared. And then you pull down that minus 2x, so you've got 3x squared minus 2x. And you're going to divide that by x, so you get 3x, and it's a positive 3x. So then I'll multiply, and I get 3x squared minus 3x. Good, it's x, because minus 2 minus minus 3 is just x. And then I'm going to pull down the 4, or oh, a plus 4, sorry. What's x divided by x? One. one. So there's going to be a plus 1 here. I'm going to multiply it by 1. And I'm going to subtract them. And I get 5. five. So find the remainder. The remainder is 5. That's the answer to that question. And I like to do this extra bit that they haven't asked us to do. 3x cubed minus 2x plus 4 is equal to, what is it equal to? Oh, sorry, divided by x minus 1. Good, plus 5 over x minus 1. And the reason that we do this, you won't... Hopefully you'd remember this in year 13. When we try and do a particular type of maths called calculus to this, calculus is really difficult, which is called integration and differentiation. It's really difficult to do to this, but it's really easy to do to this. So that's why we use this skill, because it helps us do things that would be really complicated, and it makes them become really easy by breaking it down into a polynomial and a small fraction that we've got at the end here. Okay, so we're just gonna do a few more examples. I know it sort of feels like a lot of watching, but hopefully the more you watch, the more you'll be ready to do these examples. So we're just going to keep going through these ones now, OK? Am I ready to go to the next page? So actually, I've realized there's a bit of a typing bit here. It should say let f of x equal 8x cubed minus 1. It's supposed to say 8x cubed minus 1 there. And it says by dividing 8x cubed minus 1 by 2x minus 1, write f of x in that form that we've got there. We're going to have to add in the 0x squared and, and a 0x, because there's nothing in the x squared position, and there's nothing in the x position. And they're wanting us to have it in this factorized form. So just as a little side note, don't write this down. We're going to be doing 8x cubed minus 1 divided by 2x minus 1. We're going to get some kind of answer, aren't we? 
And so if I wanted to say what 8x cubed minus 1 was, it's going to be 2x minus 1 multiplied by my answer. So even though they're asking us to factorize it here, that's the same thing as doing division, because factorizing is dividing. So let's actually get ahead and do this, and do this one we've got. So we're going to do, and you told me that we're going to have 8x cubed plus 0x squared plus 0x minus 1, and we're going to divide it by 2x minus 1. First um, thing that's going to go at the top of my bus stop, 4x squared. 8x cubed divided by 2x is going to be 4x squared. Put it in the right place. Multiply, and we get 8x cubed minus 4x squared. And when you subtract that, you get a positive 4x squared, and you're going to plus your 0x. So we've done that whole step of, mul of divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. What's the next bit going to divide to, do you think? 2x. 2x. 4x squared divided by 2x. The 4 divided by 2 gives you the 2. And the x squared divided by the x is the x. I'm going to multiply them. So I get 4x squared minus 2x. I'm going to subtract them. And I get plus 2x. And then I'm going to bring down the minus 1. one. It's just going to be a 1. Obviously, I'm then going to get a 2x minus 1, and when I subtract them, I'm going to get a 0. So there is no remainder, which means that they perfectly divide. So we have 8x cubed minus 1 divided by 2x minus 1 is equal to 4x squared plus 2x plus 1. Hence, we can say that 8x cubed minus 1 is equal to, multiplying up that 2x minus 1, 4x squared plus 2x plus 1, like this. And that's the form that they wanted it in. That's our a, b, and c value of the quadratic. So it looks quite complicated, but I'm hoping it's already starting to feel like, OK, it's just doing the same thing over and again and again and again. So I'll just give you a few seconds to write that one down. If you've written that down, you can start looking at the next problem, which is at the bottom. And then we're going to do a big chunk of practice of this on the whiteboards, OK? I have to say, I used to hate this. And I haven't, I haven't ever taught it before. I've always avoided and given it to the other teacher to teach. And actually, I quite like it now that I'm actually getting to teach it. OK, can I go on to the next page? Hamza? Yeah, you sure? OK. So this time, it's just a bigger set of numbers that we're going to do for dividing here. I've got power of 4, 3, 2, 1, and constant. So I don't need to put any zeros in for this one. And I'm going to be dividing it by a 5x plus 3. Interestingly, because the whole thing, what's this um, you know, cubic, quadratic, what's this one at the top called? A quartic. quartic. And we're dividing a quartic by a, a linear. A quartic divided by a linear is going to give us a, no, a cubic. Because a quartic has a power of 4, a linear has a power of 1. Power of 4 subtract power of 1 is going to give you a cubic like you've got here. And that worked on the previous page because we had a cubic divided by a linear. Power of 3, power of 1. The difference between that is a quadratic as well. So it kind of all makes sense with like the powers and the index laws that we've got. So we're going to do 25x to the 4 plus 75x cubed plus 6x squared minus 28x minus 6 divided by 5x plus 3. Now, a quick question that I want you to think about before we actually do this division. Can you predict if there is going to be a remainder or not? And how do you know if there is going to or not going to be a remainder? Why? That is not necessarily the reason why. It's not just because the 3 goes into the 6 here. There isn't going to be a remainder, but there's a reason why. Pardon? Nope, it's nothing to do with that. It's not to do with the numbers in this question. Why? Good. The form that they've said to give it in here has been perfectly factorized. There's nothing else left over as a remainder at the end. There's nothing left over as a remainder at the end. And I'll show you if there was a remainder 
how it might look differently. But there's nothing as a remainder, so this is going to have no remainder. OK, so we're going to do the division. 25x to the 4 divided by 5x. 5x cubed. I'll multiply, so we get 25x to the 4 plus 15x cubed. And subtract, we get 60x cubed. What is 60x cubed divided by 5x? Oh, I didn't bring down the 6x squared. Good. 60 divided by 5 is 12, so it's going to be 12x squared. When I multiply the 12x squared by the 5x, I get 60x cubed plus 36x squared. They subtract you for what, Abubakar? They give a um, minus 30. Minus 30x squared, and I'll pull down the minus 28x. So I'll divide. Anyone tell me what the division bit's going to be at the top? Minus 6, because I'm doing minus 30 divided by 5x, so it's going to be minus 6x. Good. I'll multiply. So I get minus 30x squared minus 18x. Minus 28 minus minus 18. Minus, minus, 10x. minus 10x. Pull down the minus 6. Divide this by this, and you get minus 2. We know there's going to be no remainder, but we're just checking it. And so there is no remainder. So what we've said here is that long thing. Divided by 5x plus 3 was equal to 5x cubed plus 12x squared minus 6x minus 2. So our answer is that the whole thing, there's a lot of writing this all out again. Is equal to 5x plus 3, 5x cubed plus 12x squared minus 6x minus 2. If you had a lot of spare time in the exam because you finished the whole thing in five minutes, in theory, you could expand these brackets, and they would simplify to that. We're not going to do that, though. Okay, We're not going to do that. Now, the ones we've done so far have all been divided by a linear. I need to check, because I think you probably will have some in the exercise of dividing by a quadratic. So after we've done a bit of practice, we might come back and try it with dividing by a quadratic. But I think you'll know how to do it with dividing by a quad quadratic. You just divide by the highest power and just go from there. Okay, So we're going to try some questions now from exercise 7b. I'm going to do a lot of practice on these. I'm going to do these on the whiteboards, okay? I'll leave it on this page for you to copy.